Alright guys, time to grow back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And one of the big discussions these last couple of weeks has been the Florida Mutineers resurgence and potentially them looking like a championship caliber team with how they've been playing at these last few weeks against some of the best teams in the game. What has exactly caused this? Is their new coaching staff potentially a factor in this situation? And also some of these other teams that have massive coaching staffs, is that a factor which is holding back some of the teams that do not have such an extensive team behind the scenes? In Twitter, take your thoughts in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoyed the video subscribe if you are new as always i greatly appreciate it really helps on the channel thank you very much indeed for doing that first of all this i just thought was hilarious this has got to be photoshop there's no way awakening is actually this big i know he's big weight but like um he's not actually seven foot two i think people believe this i'm not sure how how big he actually is maybe he's like six one six three something like that he's pretty tall but um i'm pretty sure he's not quite this big but maybe i'm mistaken i'm not really sure i guess we'll see on land right when awakening officially goes to land with this team in a couple of weeks time we're gonna see um if awakening actually is seven foot two it's going to be a, a big uh, a big reveal I suppose for everyone involved this as well then right so okay mutineers they've dominated these last couple of weeks I think they're three and one they lost of course to the subliners here in game five but in their first matchup last week they beat Toronto Ultra that was a phenomenal result for them and they've been looking so much better all things considered right and especially Neptune has been looking really really good indeed he's been stepping up his game very significantly in terms of the consistency and one of the reasons which potentially has turned this around for the mutineers is that well some of the new coaching talent that they've brought onto the lineup some teams in the league right now have a very extensive team behind the scenes. There's a lot of things that can be done that, that well the coaches have to do that if you've only got one coach it might put you in a bit of a tough spot right now and Optic Chicago and Dallas Empire are one of those teams and there's been a, a fair bit of discussion for the Mutineers guys the fact that this has helped them quite significantly. You can see where Mutineers sit at the present time 3-1, and 11-6 in terms of map counts. If they'd have beaten subliners they'd have been guaranteed to go through. It does get kind of interesting here the fact that they lost to subliners though because of course they started off 3-0 and zero. now they're 3-1. and one. If they lose to Dallas Empire and Toronto beat subliners then they'll be all the teams will be three and one but then a um, mutineers will like lose out on the matchup or something between mutineers and, uh, and the Dallas Empire so it all gets kind of strange in there but um, it's still possible I think the mutineers end up coming fourth here if they do lose that match to Dallas but if they play like they did up against the other teams especially ultra then they should have a great chance of winning that series regardless and this is an interesting part of things right because Dallas Empire right now pretty much only have Rambo as their um, yeah, main head coach guy who's doing all the things but then Florida mutineers they've decided to bring in someone new to the scene and it probably has helped them quite significantly. The sky says right here, having two coaches is a glitch. Shout out Willett, guy has a huge brain and has helped us a lot and of course the coach Ricky Atura. So Atura has been their coach for quite a while now but Willett has been in the amateur scene for a fair bit as well. He's now coming into this team and is effectively helping out as like an assistant coach to some degree. And uh, well, sky says right here, you know, having two coaches is a glitch. This is a, a seriously massive improvement for them behind the scenes. And as Atura says as well, having an extra pair of eyes as of recent has really helped out the team a ton. Couldn't appreciate this guy Willett any more. So they've improved dramatically recently and of course it's not necessarily just down to this changing in the coaching team but bringing someone else on seems to have made some significant improvements at the very least for the mutineers. Now other teams haven't necessarily gone down this route. One team that has though is Atlanta Phase. They have a monstrous team behind the scenes in terms of um, you know, their, well, their talent I suppose not just in terms of the roster. Of course the roster is the thing that does the main bit of the work. There's no doubt about that. RCT, Selium, Simp and Abisi you can't really go far too wrong with those four players but they have a, a massive coaching staff right and the fact that the matter is that FaZe I think right now are doing so many things right and they're really ahead of the game in terms of uh, well some of these other top teams that haven't necessarily gone down this route as of yet. Not only do they have Tupac Thuglord of course as their search and destroy analyst but you know no other team has a search and destroy analyst. They have of course an analyst in general that being Mac, who does all the statistics type stuff and then they've got two coaches they've got Crowder and then they've got RJ so someone does that I guess so they kind of split it between someone who's doing the more man-to-man -man type um you know mental management and then someone who's actually doing the more in-game strategy strategic management and that um, honestly is just phenomenal stuff and right? it's easy back says right here RJ Crowder, Tupac and me. This is the coaching staff and the analyst staff they currently have over Atlanta Vase. It's uh, well it's very scary to look at right and uh, some of these other teams have clearly not gone down this route. You look at Optic Chicago they've just got Sender there pretty much doing the entire lot and the thing is there's so many things that these coaches have to do and deal with that um, if you're a one man show it's going to be very difficult to do a great job of that and also like I, I imagine if you're the only man in, in the pros ears every single time like you're, you're 
you're doing scrims all these times per day and it feels like a lot of the time you're just kind of moaning at your players like hey you did this wrong did that wrong you should have um, done this a little bit different if you're like the only voice they ever hear like I'm sure they get kind of frustrated that the fact that you know they're only hearing you all this time whereas if you have a massive coaching staff then um, you definitely have some more opportunities to do that and you can spread the workloads somewhat between all the individuals that are on the roster and as Easy Mac says as well this is one of the things that they have to do some scouting right if you're looking at a guy like Rambo you're looking at a guy like Sender not only do they have to do all the other things so let's just go through the things that the coaching staff actually has to do Troll. but we got to give some gas like, to the other side too yeah, yeah Flor Florida's on a Florida's oh, been crazy on a, run of form you know, right now it is difficult to play a team yeah. like, like you know like this I mean Neptune's 20 and 7 it's great yeah. to see this kid showing consistency now this kid's been... his decision making has improved a lot oh so him play. much he's manipulating he making... spawns yep He's manipulating He's spawns. Go really ahead, good heads up, patient plays now. Yeah. Shout out Willet. Shout out to yeah. our coaching we have, staff we over there. We haven't talked a lot about Will on this show. That, that I think that's ended up being a really good pick. Uh, you know, if you talk to like other teams that have one or two coaches on the team, they'll tell you having a second body to help with some of those harder conversations and manage personalities and and make sure that information is being processed correctly is like a huge ad. If Florida continues to do well, you guys should probably get him on the show. He's a really good kid and he's really smart. Yeah, I, I know him from challengers from last year. So. We've gotten some people from Florida on the show. I know Skies just came on. Um, they have to obviously be in the scrims every single day. In the scrims, there's many different things that they have to do. They have to schedule the scrims first of all. Then they have to actually, you know, be there present in all the matches, looking at what the players are doing. If there's a consistent mistake, noting it down with the team, discussing it with the team to actually figure out how you can do that better next time around. Then if there's like some internal conflict within the squad you've got to potentially deal with that you've got to manage those issues then you've got to think about all right scouting for next season or for future seasons you've got to keep an eye on all this young up-and-coming talent then you've got all the statistics side of things which is of course what easy mac and some of these other analysts of the pro teams take care of for a lot of these pro teams okay they deal with all the stats they um see what the kds are looking like for the players but also what hard points are particularly good are they really bad at the p2 to p3 rotation on certain hills for example statistically that might be something they need to work on are they good at some maps in practice not good at another the maps in practice all this type of stuff i guess if you've just got a one-man show you've got to be dealing with that stuff and then if there are team internal conflicts or whatever if some players are getting frustrated with other players if there's some sort of issues like that you've got to mediate it you've got to get the, the players ready to go and the fact that if you have a massive team that can actually spread some of that workload i think that probably should be, be a massive improvement right and clearly florida mutineers have seen it but some of these other teams haven't gone down that route and it did really surprise me the fact that chicago didn't decide to bring back two packers last season they had him on the huntsman right chicago huntsman they had a session destroy analyst Tupac was on their team and uh, they didn't re-sign him and phase decided okay we're just going to snap him right up and since then their search and destroy has been very much lights out indeed and it certainly does make sense right so there's a few reasons why it's somewhat strange to me that Optic Hammond decided to go down this route because there's some teams it certainly makes sense right you look at a team like Paris Legion they don't really have any money it makes sense they just want to go down the route of having one coach who's also their substitute who just does every single thing but uh, if you're if you're trying to be a really top tier team I think that what phase are doing right now is probably going to be the norm in a few years time in Call of Duty and I'd be surprised if teams don't follow suit relatively soon we can see Sender right here after the match gets up you know fist bumps the team and um, this is kind of the type of stuff but he has to do a lot of things behind the scenes I imagine for this optic team at the present time it uh, can't be easy being in his shoes especially because I mean as soon as the series goes badly for optic he's the one who gets a lot of the blame right it's tough to see ready for Sender the fact that when he when the team does well he never gets any credit but when the team does poorly he um well gets a lot of the blame right and you know obviously he's doing so much with this team already and we can see some of the coaching staff that is in the league right now and most of these teams have well at least well more than one player I suppose on the lineup but some of the top tier squads it did kind of surprise me looking at this the fact that Dallas Empire and Optic for example aren't in that situation and maybe that's because they don't feel like they need it right I'm pretty sure Hake said at one point in a podcast or something maybe it was on like an Optic pre-show the fact that he'd ask the teams if they felt like they needed something else on the team do they need someone else an, an additional member of the coaching staff they decided no right they decided okay they're going to be fine with the direction they're currently taking I'm pretty sure even Karma said look if, if the team wants me to help out with something or other I'm quite happy to do so but uh, clearly they don't want to go down that route which is perfectly reasonable and uh, you know when you've got massive personalities on a team maybe that's something somewhat understandable but um, at the same time we're seeing some success with it for the Atlanta phase guys right now and um, those seem to be very coachable players as well maybe the Optic guys and maybe the Dallas guys Crimson for example might not be too easy to, to coach if you've got a new guy coming onto the team that isn't a veteran of the scene someone like Rambo for example and uh, yeah maybe we see that at times with the Optic Chicago guys as well but phase 
have like a, the same coaching staff as they have an actual starting roster, which um, has got to be part of the reason why they're seeing quite the success that they are having. Mutineers have just brought in Willard. Then London have dominators. Whilst they've got Dominate and Shane on the gorilla side, you've got Bevels, Ricky, and Doug Lee doing the stats. Then you've got uh, Novus doing the stats on the Los Angeles Thieves side. So you've got analysts, you've got coaches, and um, the teams that have a couple of coaches or at least a couple of voices at the very least, right? Like an analyst and a coach like Revan and JP, for example. Like JP also understands Call of Duty. He can also kind of uh, share in that responsibility. I'm sure that Revan does a similar thing over at the Minnesota Rockets. So most teams have decided to go down the route of at least one coach and then some sort of analyst as well. And of course, the notable exceptions being Optic Chicago in the Dallas Empire at the present time. So it's all rather interesting stuff. I do wonder what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Would this be a difference maker for Optic? Because uh, some of the pros are certainly implying it's been a difference maker for them. If they did go down this route, I'm not really sure who even you get at this point, right? Given the two part could have been a great option as like an additional player in terms of an analyst. At the same time, you've got Karma there on the bench. Maybe you move Sender into more of like a man management type role and Karma can actually help with um, you know, some of the more strategic stuff or search and destroy, for example. I'm not sure what route they potentially want to go down, but I think that some of the top tier teams are using this to great effect and um, other ones maybe haven't quite caught up to the point right yet. A couple of interesting things to finish off the video. This first of all from Saints, as he says right here, I guess my buyout that I had earlier in the year affected it not being in the league, but now that I'm free, I should be back in no time. So kind of confirming what we thought, the fact that um, he did have some sort of buyout, like a 25k buyout or something that uh, Paris didn't want to pay, they didn't want to pay the 25k or whatever it happened to be to get him off of the New York Subline as a canopy. But now that team is now long, no longer a thing, it's very possible that Saints gets somewhere or other back into this league at some point or another. But it's actually says right with the whole situation of the optic side as a wise man once said it is never short who's the wise man major maniac says dashy so still like optic is certainly in a fine position but i did think it was an interesting discussion at the very least and just to finish off with this pretty funny video here this uh, well came out from this video a couple of days ago this beer pong type stuff that optic chicago did christian comes out who do you think you should have dropped throughout your career and for without real hesitation just straight drops crib six back in call of duty black ops 3 intrigue your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. It really helps out the YouTube because I know you enjoyed this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well, and I'll grow the competitive Call of Duty community. Thanks for watching as always. Take care, and I will see you next time. <laughs> All right, he'll answer anything. <laughs> Wait, you ask me though, right? You guys are good. Who do you wish you dropped but never did? Uh, Crim6. Back in Black Ops 3. Who do you want the f after that so quick? <laughs> uh, what do I do with the card? <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs>